What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Punk Rock Radar. Today is the sequel to an episode we did a few weeks ago where our significant others gave us their 10 favorite bands and we ranked them S through D. Today, tables have turned. We've given them our 10, 10 of our favorite bands, two songs each. And then they kind of gave us their notes on the bands, what they thought of it. And then they are going to rank the bands S through D. So I'm joined, as always, by uh, Discord Kingpin over there on the left, Elliot, a.k.a. Ergoth. How, how do you think? Uh, I, I haven't read my wife's list yet. She's a ball buster, so I'm expecting every single one of these bands to get roasted. But uh, how do you think uh, Katarina felt about your bands? Well, you know, as as your band should, since you roasted hers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is karma time. I know. Nine Inch Nails and Tool got, got you know, stabbed <laughs> in the side a couple times. But, uh, I mean, uh, so, like, uh, five of the bands that were on her top five have at one point in time been on my top five. So ours are pretty similar, and she kind of knew a lot of these bands, and I kind of had an idea where she ranked them. There was a few ones, I guess, that were – Kind of surprising, but I kind of figured uh, these were going to end up where they were. So, yeah. And and Lewis, how, how would you describe Kate's overall listening experience? You think she was enthusiastic about this project? She was enthusiastic because she's a trooper and yeah. she's a good girlfriend. But uh, she she did give me this disclaimer, which I don't know if she intended me to read, but it's pretty funny. So, put a uh, disclaimer. I tend to like pretty music. Punk is very sincerely the music genre I know the least about in the entire world, maybe except for jazz. <laughs> very funny. Nice. And it's so far out of my scope, I felt like I was listening to people speak a language I've never heard before and trying to follow along while also not trying to be a bitch. So <laughs> this, I think this is going to be pretty fun. Uh, I read some of these already, I, a little spoiler, but yeah, I think it was pretty fair. So I think it's going to be good. Uh, some surprises too. So I was, I was pretty surprised. All right. Well, let's get going. Hey, yeah. I'll, I'll kick us off. I think I went third last time, so I'll, I'll start us off here. Uh, I, I named my playlist. I just call, I, I was just trying to be efficient. I called it Wife Rank Band. And right off the bat, she said 10 out of 10 playlist name. Uh, she liked the uh, noun verb noun, no nonsense, no fluff playlist Wife name. So <laughs> starting off positive. But the first band I gave her was Green Day. Uh, which is my favorite band. I, the two songs I gave her were Scattered and Westbound Sign. So I, I know she's heard most of Dookie, so I wanted to pick maybe a couple songs she didn't really know. So yeah. about Scattered, she says, a uh, big teen movie in the late 90s vibe. It's fine. Billy Joe is insufferable, though. Teens have definitely awkwardly jammed to this at high school pool party. And... For Westbound Sign, did Billy Joe get dumped a lot? These are all up-tempo breakup songs. Dude has made a 17-year-old's discontent a career. I probably view Green Day the same way you do T-Swift. The guy can write a bop, but I just don't like okay. him. And then she put him in the D tier. Green Day in the D tier is how That's this is going to start I, off. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, honestly. I didn't expect that. Yeah. I, I like, put. Yeah. I guessed where I thought she was going to put all these. I had Green Day in C tier. I knew she, I know she doesn't okay. like Billy Joe for whatever reason. I, like I guess he's voice not. or just like his songwriting and personality? She just I thinks he's a, he, she thinks he's a he's douche. A uh, like, ironically, when, you know, Trent Reznor is there and all those other guys. But he's I mean, the I wrong type of true. douche, I guess. Yeah. He's but, not her douche. So. Yeah. He's like a he's like a nice guy douche. Where uh, yeah. Trent Reznor, I get no, Trent Reznor. I feel like would be a nice guy douche too. So he'd be. Trent like, Reznor you know. is almost undoubtedly a nicer person than Billy Joe. I would bet good money yeah. because anyone who seems yeah. that shitty is often a nice person. So yeah, except maybe yeah. So except for Marilyn Manson, maybe. Manson. That's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say, but I cut myself <laughs> off. He ended up like it's like the one you most suspect at that point. Yeah, it, it, with the, I remember when the accusations came out. I was like, yeah, <laughs> like that makes sense. <laughs> Don't really need to go any deeper into that, but. Oh, I guess we'll go to Lewis now with his yeah. uh, band. Uh, so Lewis's yeah. first band on the list is going to be Bad Religion. 
Yeah. Okay. So bad religion. So I didn't tell her to like specifically talk about each individual song, but I'll tell you which ones I gave her because I wanted to give her kind of a like you know a spat the ones that she maybe hasn't heard. Bad religion. She certainly heard in the car a couple times, but I gave her sorrow because I thought she might dig that one because it's obviously a bop, as your wife would say. And then I gave uh, I gave you I gave I gave them you gave her you as well because it's one of the classics. Uh, so in regards to bad religion. This this one kind of shocked me. His voice sounds British, which I don't know if I agree with, but he's got a kind of got an affect to his voice, I guess, where I could see it. These guys are just all right, but I know this one is very high up on Lewis's list, so I don't want to be terribly critical. I can see the appeal. Again, nice harmonies, relatively melodic and catchy. Sorrow did get stuck in my head. D tier. D, oh, both of our favorite Damn. bands ended up in the D tier. That's oh, no, no, wrong. no, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. C tier, my fault. My fault. Okay. Okay. There we not go. as bad as Green Day, so C tier. We got plenty of D tiers coming, don't mm -hmm. we? So. Well, at least two. So. All right. So, Elliot, the first band for you is going to be the Flatliners. Okay, that's pretty easy. So, uh, the Flatliners were in her top ten as well. Yeah. And I limited myself to, like, one of because uh, the wonder years and some 41 are also in her top 10 which could have been in my top 10 so i i went with the one that i like the most so there wasn't just so much crossover it would be kind of boring it would be like yeah the band i put in my top 10s s tier s tier a tier um but what she said about the flatliners is the flatliners are in her top 10 band uh, many of their songs are in her top 100 just a lot of positive energy and overall good vibes the favorite albums or Cavalcade and Inviting Light favorite tracks are Monumental, Count Your Bruises, Nicotine Lip Lips, and Eulogy. So just kind of got favorite albums, favorite tracks. She likes the band. It's S tier. S -tier <laughs> it's in yeah. the top 10. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. not much to say. But she likes Inviting Light. I know John has like a passionate, deranged <laughs> hatred of Inviting Light. But deranged? I like <laughs> yeah, unhinged. <Ranged>. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's fine. It's it's my most disappointing album. That's all. Yeah, you've said. You've said. Um, I, it's still I, a I flatliners like it, record. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. like it, but yeah, I, I've I've <laughs> I've definitely um, hated on it more than I probably should. Which you know. Yeah, I remember the tier list. I was he went pretty hard on it. <laughs> all right. But uh, your next band, John. So we all have the same next band, which is No Effects. Yeah. It's on this will be a, interesting. It's on all of our lists. And um my prediction, I, I predicted Kat was gonna put it in the A tier. And I was close. She went B tier, and I gave her two songs. I gave her uh Pump Up the Volume, the from uh the low where is that? Lower, I think. I don't remember where it's from. And um Pharmacist Daughter. And she says, At least Fat Mike is kind of funny. Usually Usually, but this song is bleak. Pharmacist Daughter is on my playlist already, but I don't know why. Is this guy okay? Both songs are about narcotics. Killer random guitar solo, though. I, yeah. I just can't move past the thought that, as a whole, this band probably is very smelly. Six Years on <laughs> Dope is better than these songs. Wait, is that also about opiates? That's what she says. But I guess... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but she ended up... Going uh, a B tier on no effect. She's probably, yeah, I mean, one of them is named Smelly, so she's can't be that far off. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Six Years on Dope was about doing dope, but Fat Mike <laughs> mostly just talks about doing prescription pills, so it's even kind of more pathetic and less hardcore, but... <laughs> Go yeah, ahead, well, Lewis. so no effects. Yeah, so I actually also gave Kate a uh, pharmacist daughter because it's my favorite no effects song, and I also nice. I did all out of angst because I figured we give her a little bit of the uh, ska that so many of our bracket likes to talk about. But um, should have been on the list. Let's dude. see what she had. To, it got yeah, robbed. Let's see what no effects. <laughs> let's see what she had to say about no effects. I liked guys immediately. Great instrumentals, tight harmonies, high energy. Nice is what i would imagine when somebody says good punk music so yay for scott in general very singable melodic fun keep in mind she hasn't heard anything past uh the at this point the early 2000s <laughs> okay so it yeah. been very, i think the experience would have been very different if i gave her half album or double album or single album <laughs> well the experience um, would be different for all of us <laughs> I, know, I know i know i don't think any of us but, like this. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. But she's uh this one, S. S tier. Damn. That's cool. There we go. Yeah. We I this, I uh, agree, Kate. All right, what about uh Katarina? Uh so she said she never even heard of No Effects before I introduced them to her. Uh she has songs that she really, really likes by them, but she says the lyrics are not her thing. They're very hit or miss. They're not she doesn't like fat Mike's lyrics at all. So You guys are the favorites... same, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um I gave uh, oh the songs I gave her were Idiots Are Taking Over and 180 Degrees. I'm not really sure why, to be honest. Idiots are taking over is one of my favorite degrees songs. Degrees is a weird pick. <laughs> it is kind of a weird it's pick. A I, I thought she heard more songs than that, but she she didn't like really either one of those songs. But the songs <laughs> that she does like are Everything in Moderation, Perfect Government, and 60%. And uh, she said, I remember I we listened to 60%, and it sounded like an Italian, like a classic Italian singer, one of his songs. And she spent like her entire car ride trying to find out what this why the 60% melody sounded like some singer. I don't know who it was. Also, also, she says all their album art sucks, except for the ice cream one. Wow. Which is, yeah, <laughs> which I, I also agree with. No effects is album art. Did you, show her, did you show her the Eating Lamb album cover? She might change Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. I, she hates the Wolves and Wolves uh, clothing album cover with, like, a passion. She thinks it's totally ugly and awful, which That's I agree. John's favorite. Is that your favorite album cover? <laughs> Bubble of the Valley is my favorite the... album cover. Yet. But yeah. uh I yeah, I guess I guess the album art is kind of weak. I never thought of it. Yeah, no effects of album art's always been super weak. Uh but she she put him in B tier. Oh, after so. all that it still ended up in B. That's surprising. <laughs> yeah. I mean she likes she likes some songs. She likes a good bit of songs. And she had songs that I didn't put on here that she's heard before and likes. So, did but, you debate just giving? Did you guys, either of you, just debate giving them the decline? I almost did that. <laughs> no, that like, was not like even up for, That wasn't even in the debate. Uh, <laughs> that would have been good, actually. I should have did that. All right, um, I'll move us on here. We're gonna take a, a change of pace, but not really. About as different as this list gets. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm stumbling through this. This is I have a handwritten sheet, so I'm doing my best to read this. Uh, it's very neat, but. Uh, it's tough. So the next band I picked is the Copyrights. And she said, I gave her Charlie Burger Time and Crutches. She says, Charlie Burger Time is w way catchier. This is John Core. Bonus points for the song being two minutes or less. So we see eye to eye there. And a Crutches. And she says, you definitely made some of these lyrics a cryptic subtweet or Facebook status. I would bet money. I like them. It's hard to hate albums that takes take 30 minutes to listen to total, but they're not spectacular. And then she put them in the C tier for the copyright. So that's I nice. guess it's all fair, right? I don't have any issues with any of that. Honestly, the, the hardly roasted in comparison to Green Day. So yeah. <laughs> pretty well praised. It, they're a pretty innocuous pretty band. You know, it's hard to have uh, like a hardline yeah. stance on them. Yeah, definitely. They're, they they they, I feel like they make music that's pretty accessible for anybody to at least enjoy on a, a surface level. Yeah. Right? Well, that's that's why they're the copyrights and not the copy wrongs. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> hey, dude, I'm right there with you. No, I have no clue. What's your <laughs> band, Lewis? <laughs> All right. Up next for Lewis know, what am I doing? <laughs> is uh, the Suicide Machines. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, okay. The Machines. So uh, this was her response to them. Uh, sorry, I got my notes, too. I gave her, uh, what did I give her? I gave her a uh, permanent holiday and high anxiety. I felt like those were pretty fun choices uh, for her to listen to. She's never heard them at all. And uh, I, I think I remember when we first started dating, I had just seen them like the week before. So she remembered like that I'd mentioned them and stuff. So I was like, all right, yeah, that's okay. So um, she said, as a high anxiety person, <laughs> I appreciated these guys. I found myself enjoying them a lot. Simple, repetitive, and I was jamming to the bass riffs. The whiny, vo whiny voice works well here. So that was her feeling on the Suicide Machines. Uh, she gave them a um, a, C t uh, a B tier. Excuse me. Okay. Cool. That's fair. I don't know if I'd say he has a whiny voice though, compared to compared to like No Effects and some of the other yeah, stuff. Definitely, definitely in comparison. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm trying. I get. Yeah, I I didn't really hear that either, but I could definitely hear. I that guess some of the songs. I guess Fat Mike's more nasally than whiny. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're pretty close, yeah. but I I don't think uh, I don't think Jay's voice is whiny though. Uh, 
She had a lot of whiny comments in here, so I think she kind of had a, a specific I mean, agenda going against these like punk bands. <laughs> probably right. So, it's kinda yeah, so in their yeah. nature. All right, Ellie. Up next for you, uh, a surprise by this one: the Misfits. Yeah, so the Misfits were the first punk band I ever uh, was obsessed with. So I was super into Misfits. So I've kind of added them here, but uh you're surprised but that i liked them that much yeah i did i did yeah, not expect too. them as top 10 band yeah i used to be uh, they're like the first band i ever got obsessed with so i was uh, super deep into the misfits uh so she said about the misfits is that uh she likes the misfits but only a little of the misfits not all of the misfits yeah <laughs> their sound take. becomes yeah. stale and she <laughs> struggles to finish full albums but some songs are really really great uh, favorite songs are Hybrid Moments, Dig Up Her Bones, and Where Eagles Dare. And the songs I gave her were Hybrid Moments and Dust to Dust off Famous Monsters, which I think is a it's a pretty good uh, song off Famous Monsters, if you don't remember. I think it's one of the better ones on Famous Monsters, to be honest. It, I always liked it. That's the most rational Misfits take I've ever heard, honestly. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so perfect. She, <laughs> yeah. So she gave them a C tier. <laughs> That's also fair. Yeah. That should be, yeah. you know, all those like greatest punk records of all times. Like the Misfits are always up there. And it's like, no, like that's what people should be talking about when they have the Misfits. Uh, did you happen to watch our album rankings of the Misfits, Elliot? Because yeah, I, I think, think you'd you put, be disappointed you put, like, with us. Yeah, you're, you're, it was, I, I disagree with a good bit of it. I think yeah. Matt was Matt on it. I think yeah. he was trash. He was like yeah. some of the eighties stuff pretty hard. <laughs> He trash talks everything, but I I didn't yeah. even give an S tier. I gave an S tier to the oh, logo. He, he, oh yeah, oh yeah. The, the logo is definitely an S tier. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. The the fiend skull. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely a better better at merchandising the art, making music at this point. So that was my and favorite. I mean that that's true. I like everything up until Famous Monsters though, but I I won't even listen to the new stuff. I haven't even listened to a single any of it. So, but I love the '80s stuff. They're the first uh, one of the first punk bands I ever got into. Them and the the Kennedys. And then no effects. Uh, but yeah, I like cool. those. Yeah. Oh, All right. he, sa- he, he said, real quick, he said that the, there were like no good songs except for hybrid moments off of Static Age. And that, that's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous <laughs> take, Matt, if you're watching this. I disagree heavy. He loved, go he loved the Misfits when we were young. He did. Too. He was like Mr. Yeah, Misfits. Yeah. He, he was like, I, that was me. Yeah, and then like it got into like all horror punk. Matt's always been the most horror punk out of all of us. For so, so I was surprised with that video too. Yeah, I remember you like this is horror or... punk volume one and two, yeah. and mm-hmm. jam, and they were they're horrible compilations. All those bands sucked, but I loved them when I was younger. <laughs> but yeah, he liked like Son of Sam, Son of Sam, and, like, yeah, Sawin, right? Or do they they call it Sam Hain, though, right? Even though it is Sawin, Sam, yeah, Sam, yeah, oh yeah, Sam Hain, yeah, no idea. Um, then uh, I remember uh, Wednesday thirteen. I was pretty into. They're pretty terrible. But no. Cal- Calabrese is the best Misfits core band. I'll stand by that. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. The last record was eh, but everything up to that was good. It's not even a hot take. Yeah. So. All right. I'll move us along here. I picked. I picked a newer band. Uh, you know, compared to the rest of these guys, I went with F O D. The songs I gave. Uh, I cheated a little bit. I picked the song Little Princess that I knew she would like and uh, Ontario. And for Little Princess, she says, love it. It's so cute, John. That's all. (laughs) Um, Ontario, she says, uh, they're very self-aware. Why won't they tour Ontario, though? Why is that song worthy? I'm singing along anyway. I think I know all the words. But then uh, she put them in the S tier, uh, (laughs) F-O-D. Uh, and I do want to say the last two I've gotten exactly right. I predicted S tier for FOD, and I predicted C tier for the copyright. So I, I am uh, I'm batting fifty percent over here on my predictions. So oh, yeah. I don't know. I I knew like so. Um, what's it called? The princess one is about his daughter, and it's a it's a very you know heartwarming song. So I knew that would pull it at the heartstrings. So not surprised to see FOD in the S tier and friends of the channel. So hopefully they're watching. There you go, guys. Some some appeal. Uh, um, yeah. Trick to, trick 
trade. Great record. Only one I've listened to so far. Oh, Tricks of the Trade. That's my favorite one. Tricks of the Trade. If you guys are watching and you don't know FOD, go check out Tricks of the Trade. And they have a brand new record on uh, Double Helix and Spam that came out last month. Go check that out, too. Um, But, Lewis, your next band is going to be the Lawrence Arms. Nice. Ah, all right. Well, this this one had one of the shortest reviews. Uh, <laughs> it just said, innocuous, not offensive at all. I wanted to like it, but it was just okay. Would skip, whiny. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the songs Damn. that I gave her, I gave her the, uh, the you know, uh, the slowest drink at the whatever bar, that the slowest drink at the saddest bar and the snowiest day and whatever, the Chicago thing. Yes. And yes. Uh, the YMCA down the street from the clinic, because that's one of my favorites. So I gave her two kind of like popular ones that I thought she might get into. Uh, but they did not make the D tier. They got into the C tier. So nice. got the Lawrence Arms kind of kicking around down below with Bad Religion. So interesting. I'm curious what your D tiers are. I can't remember which bands you pick. So this will be fun. Oh, I, one of them you'll definitely be like, oh, that's the one as soon as John says the name. So don't worry. <laughs> oh, I think I actually do remember now. I know it's in D tier. <laughs> You said C for that one, right? C, yeah, C okay. for the Lawrence Arms. Okay, this I I can I could I could see the vibe of her list for sure. I think I think I can guess too where the rest is going. Um, the Elliot, we are on to lag wagon for you. Okay, okay, so lag. Uh, the two songs I gave her were Lullaby and Made of Broken Parts off of Hang. Oh, I love that. Uh, she yeah. didn't really like either one of those songs. <laughs> Oh man, was rock. Yeah, see, she said uh, she doesn't really like them. They don't sound particularly interesting. A few songs she thinks were decent, but she hasn't really listened to them very much. Uh, but she did appreciate. I showed her Resolve one time a while back and talked about the whole the whole reason I like it and stuff like that. The whole allure by it. She says she appreciates the story. It's very sad, but she doesn't vibe with like any era of their sound. She even listened to May Sixteenth. Didn't really like it. Said it was fine. Said there were no songs that particularly stuck out to her. So D tier for yeah. Lag Wagon. Oh man! Yeah. Yeah. Imagine she was like, "Yeah, but Railer rules." That album's really <laughs> good. I don't want you to let me listen to that one. I didn't even show her Railer. Sorry, I'm like sick here, trying to hold back coughs. You, you know what's funny? Like uh, that album. Of, of all the iconic punk bands, I feel like it's not uncommon for somebody to hate on Lag Wagon. Do you, do you guys oh, notice yeah, that? Agreed. 100%. My friend yeah. Cody doesn't like them at all. He thinks they're boring. I feel like something has to click with you, with the band, mm -hmm. for you to, like, appreciate them. Um, I feel like they're definitely a band that, like, especially a lot of their uh, their production is not great, so it's not, like, the most accessible thing. I don't think they're, like, particularly an accessible band. They also don't have, like, a standout hit. I mean, May 16th, but I don't know. I always feel like, I always forget that's like their biggest song sometimes. It's their I mean, biggest song because like it's a date. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's yeah. my point, though, with Black Wagon, too, is like, I like them, but I think they're boring. That's why they'll never be like an album where I'm just like, this is amazing. You know, I mean, I think they're fine, but I never got all the love that they get from the dedicated core either. So I'm, I'm yeah, down. Yeah, I understand yeah. her take here. So yeah, I'm sure. Disagree. They're in my top 10. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Also, I, know. I, I, kind of, I kind of. With Lag Wagon, it's more of like Joey Cape in, in the side projects as well. I kind of put in there together. Like, I really love Bad Astronaut, and I really like some of his solo acoustic stuff as well. So it's like the whole thing. I just like Joey Cape as a songwriter in general. So maybe in Lag Wagon, but also just any anything Joey, all of Joey Cape's vanity projects that John likes to oh shit on. Oh, my God. I, oh, yeah. Elliot. I, I but enjoy I do them. <laughs> I want to defend Hang again, though, since we might not get a chance to. I think Hang is like almost like their masterclass album. I know people it's, it's really good. It, I, it's really I, good. I think it's an incredible record. So, all right. So, John, moving along, uh, Lewis and I have the same band up next, and I I also predicted where this one was gonna go, but um, we'll we'll get to the song titles. This is Pennywise, and I I wanted to give her like the two like two songs I consider like you know, kind of their iconic track. So I picked Fuck Authority and Society. And uh, she says, Fuck Authority, much better. More angry punks, please. Isn't the point that the government sucks? Let's collapse society. And then she says, oh, that's what the next song is literally about. I deduct points for rhyming along and long. It's fine, but went on too long for a punk song. I officially stopped listening at two minutes. Maybe this is why you don't have an attention span. 
and then she put them in Damn. the uh, D tier, which is what I predicted. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's okay. bad for Pennywise. <laughs> yeah, really. Huh. Uh, I guess we'll jump into mine because I also gave Kate Pennywise uh, with Fuck Authority and I gave her um, Yesterday's instead because I was like, well, that's like kind of a little bit more melodic and might yeah. be more up her uh, her alley. So to that, um, another short review, but not a lot of hate for them. Um, this is her immediate response. This made me want to fuck shit up, which <laughs> is the uh, that is the point. I think I mentioned the last time I mosh pit was uh, was to Pennywise and their reunion when Jim was back. So um, this is her succinct, a brief discussion of them, like angrier, grittier, less produced Green Day. <laughs> So yeah. I I guess I could get that. I'm behind it. Uh, I mean, uh, I think they would probably not like that because I think they've been kicking around about as long as Green Day, but that's cool. Uh, yeah, because we're yeah, about the same time, yeah. probably, right? 88. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, but Pennywise, um, I was thinking they might actually go a little bit higher, but she put them in. Sorry, I got to space it out. She put them right next to Suicide Machines in B. Okay, that's fair. The two angriest bands on the list next to each other. Really. Yeah, that's kind true. of. All right. I don't know if that's it. I don't I think Lewis is an angrier one. But, <laughs> um, but I'm assuming it's gonna be in D. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is yeah. the angriest one, you're right. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Well Elliot, your next band uh is not very angry. Uh Banner Pilot. Yeah, Banner Pilot. So love me some banner pilot. And so does she. Uh, let's see here. Nice. Where is my banner? Here we go. Uh, she really likes the melodies and the simple catchiness of the songwriting. She really likes the vocals. Has been a fan since I introduced them to her a while back. Favorite songs are Spanish Red, Alchemy, and Modern Shakes. And the two songs I gave her were Spanish Reds and Letterbox for some reason. I was just like, I don't know why. I sometimes just put these like deep cuts in there for like no reason. But she 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 really likes Banner Pilot. And they are going in the A tier. So nice. there we go, man. She's going like perfect, nice and sync. Yeah, One yeah. in each tier so far. Good balance. Yeah, we got them all lined up. <laughs> so <sighs> I agree with her takes as well. Um, all right, we'll move along here. The next band I picked was MXPX. Uh, the songs I gave were My Life Story and Well Adjusted. And for My Life Story, she says. Is his life story that he has terrible travel luck, a uh, crazy chorus, oh, catchy chorus, and very jazzy. And well-adjusted, she says, also on my playlist, even though it sounds like Green Day, too many yeah, yeahs, nobody's that excited for a lobotomy. And then A tier, which I predicted, really? uh, I predicted B, so she liked this a little more. It's, it's very accessible and catchy, so I kind of get it. But yeah, she oh. went A tier on MXPX. I thought they would have been lower just because of uh, their vibe and seem like they'd mesh up with all the industrial, angry industrial stuff. If she if she knew so. they started off as Christian rock, they would probably be much lower, is my guess. Uh, okay. But should, I, I hid yeah, that you information. Should've, you should have done one of their like Christian like, gospel <laughs> cover songs. I don't even know if those are on Spotify. <laughs> but yeah, um, moving along, Lewis's next band, The Lillingtons. Ah, The Lillingtons. Uh, all right, so this was like the, my tenth band I picked because I was kind of filling up those last spots, and we talked about this. Like my top ten fluctuates, yeah. but uh, I've been really yeah, into the I think everyone's lately. top ten fluctuates yeah. pretty. But sh pretty yeah. short vibes here. But I'll tell you what I gave her. I wanted to give her kind of a range, so I gave an, I gave her um, Pursuit of Pleasure off of John's favorite Lillington's album, uh, Stella Sapiente. <laughs> Then I gave her my favorite Lillington song, Zombies, off of uh, the Too Late Show. Um, so she had that kind of exposure, like around. Um, she said one of the on the prettier and more melodic side. So I think she really dug the uh, dug Stella Sapienta stuff because she, she said, but the production yeah. really gave me '80s vibes, which is exactly yeah. the, the vibe of that album. It's great. Um, she goes, they're fine. She goes, more my speed <laughs> than some of the others for sure. She goes, I really like Zombies. Uh, S nice wow right there you go s tier for the stella Sapienta i mean in comparison in, so. it's not super surprising i think yeah I, yeah I feel like a or s makes sense for the lillingtons uh given her bands yeah. she picked last time Proclivity, yeah 
Yeah, yeah, like the especially with Stella, it's got it's very like atmospheric, and I feel like it's yeah. that's very not like in punk a lot. So it has like that range. I think if the Willingtons were on my list, they'd be in Cat's S tier also. She's got uh, Stella Sapiente hanging up in her like nook area in the bedroom. So I'm almost positive yeah, it would yeah, be there. Rules. Um, Elliot, your next band is gonna be Rancid. Okay, okay. So rancid uh so rancid was in her top five most streamed on spotify last year which i was surprised yeah. by and i said it i think i, I don't think the video was in the video but i think i said to you guys like i was surprised it was even in her top five and she was like all offended by that she told me like what you don't think i listen to punk music like this <laughs> there was a whole i was like i'm sorry i didn't know i didn't know i felt like this was not her vibe at all but she really likes rancid uh, she really likes Tim's strange vocal style. She's a big fan of bands with weird vocal styles. She likes the front bottoms, which have a weird vocal style. And a lot of her favorite bands, if they're if they're singing very strangely and very, uh, what's what's the word? Unconventional singing styles. She really likes. Um, let's see here. Uh, has become her favorite 90s punk band, an overall fun, unique, and energetic vibe. Uh, favorite songs are listed M.I.A., St. Mary, and Fall Back Down. And the songs I gave her were <laughs> I Want to Riot. I don't know why. Just once again, just because the B-sides went on there, and I like that song. And then uh, uh, Olympia W.A., Olympia, Olympia Washington. Washington. Washington, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so they are in the S tier. She really likes Rancid. Wow. So... I know she's a, a real a real punk rocker. So I'm sorry I doubted. Uh <laughs> those those favorite song choices are questionable. But yeah, Rancid's a good band. For I know sure. you don't like fall. At least, it's not, like, you. at least it's not uh arrested in Shanghai. Yeah. That would have made me really question. Fall back things. down. Yeah. I like Fall Back Down. That's a fun song. Okay. You guys are you guys are yeah. <laughs> indestructible haters. The music video, I, I I the first time I heard it was the music video, so I don't know if that kind of skewed me. Um but uh it was they was going nah, like we, punk we were rock so boy ga- band style. <laughs> we were so gassed up from two thousand, I think yeah. was the problem when that album came out. Like because like we both we all loved the earlier stuff, but then two thousand came out and knocked our balls off. And then it was like I wanted more of that, and then it was not that, you know. So, I mean I, I cool, feel though. like Indestructible's a fine rancid. I think it's like the least like the last like really good rancid record. That might so, be true. I like the latest one better than Indestructible personally. Really? Okay. That's a <laughs> that's a take. So, also Saint Saint Mary is like a good song. I didn't even remember what that song sounded like. I was like Saint Mary and it's like that uh coming through the door with the loaded forty four in a hand. And I was like, you know what? This is a good this is a fun song. <laughs> I like Saint Mary. It's a good song, yeah. That one's a bit yeah. Yeah. But what? all, all right, right, John. We'll... Yeah. I, I like when uh propaganda roasts them in uh roast that video too and um I forget what song that is, but whatever. We'll we'll move on. Um, let's see what I got next. The next band I gave her is Frenzel Rom, and I gave her uh, Bird Attack because I have to, and uh, Storage <laughs> Unit Pill Press, just because I wanted her reaction on the, <laughs> these two songs. She says, uh, "Bird Attack, nonsensical musical chaos. This man needs to stay indoors." That said, it's a perfect song. Uh, storage unit pill press she says imagine having this dude's life what is even going on how do you write these lyrics still very good i'm just confused um and with all that said i thought frenzel i thought they'd be a but she went down to b which is surprising given that she called bird attack a perfect song so she must not have been feeling storage unit it is also a minute so yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it's a minute but you get like a thrash metal like uh it's, it's a bridge <laughs> it's the best yeah. i mean i agree it is a perfect song but it's it does seem to be the antithesis to uh like nine inch nails eight minute <laughs> yeah i mean it, it doesn't repeat song. anything let alone the same thing for like four four to ten measures so different yeah. uh different what's what different strokes so but yeah, B tier. I'm fine with it. <laughs> but uh, Lewis, this is this is what we were uh, kind of hinting at before. Your next band, and speaking of like 
non-conventional vocal styles, your next band is Leftover Crack slash Choking Victim. Yeah. So yeah. I felt Black like I just gave, gave her... Yeah, exactly. So I gave her both both bands and a song from each band just because it felt like, you know, I mean, they're pretty much the same band. They're and the especially same band. Early, I, I would do it, too. And this, yeah. This, yeah, especially early Leftover Crack, which is what I went with. So I had given her 500 Channels, which is obviously the iconic Joking Victim song. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like, then uh, yeah. Cracks, and, yeah, and Crack City Rockers off of Mediocre Generica, uh, which is obviously a really good one, too. Um, so this was her funny take. So... Uh, I have to admit that when I saw the choking victim poster on Lewis's wall, so by the way, it's not a band poster. It's actually the posters from New York city that the band was inspired to name their band after. So it's like, um, the, um it's like for the first aid and it has the logo yeah, of the yeah. man choking and it's what they named the band after. So I had, I had stolen that from my stole the little guy in, for the album, the album art, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So I have that poster. Yeah. I got it from my college. They had one up and it was like really old and I just ripped it one day and I've had it ever since. So uh, but she goes, when I thought that I thought it was literally instructional <laughs> and she goes and she never asked about it. She says, the only, <laughs> I'm only now just realizing it's a band, which is funny. Uh, she said, I get the high energy thing and that's fun, but I find his voice quite grating. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know uh, it's. I know this style of music isn't really about being pretty, but it was kind of painful. This is not allowed in the car. Please don't hurt me. Uh, and then she said, "Leftover crack, choking victim 2.0 with a question mark." See above comments. So uh, yeah, I don't think we'll be listening to a lot of leftover crack or choking victim together. So I, I'd say it's a sure as shit. That's a D tier for her. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna throw them down there. That's funny. They, they almost made my top 10. It's just I saw you put them, and I decided I didn't want us to have too many repeats. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, my girl, she said that Leftover Crack just gave her bad vibes. <laughs> that's what she said when she heard them. And I was yeah, like, that's fair. fair yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's just good, for, good protective instincts there. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I don't want to be in a room alone with the lead singer of this band. <laughs> you shouldn't, yeah. <laughs> no, definitely not. All right, uh, Elliot, we, we're we're taking a turn where this is probably the two bands. Well, actually, you've got some weird shit on your list, man. That two bands <laughs> yeah, I never yeah. heard of. Um, yeah, but yeah. up next, we've got like the anti leftover crack. Uh, the Menzingers is your next band. Yeah, so the Menzingers. Menzingers are kind of a grower band for me. I've seen them live a bunch of times, and just over time, I really love the Menzingers. Just so. But I'll, I'll say what she thinks of the men singers, since this is not my list. It's her list of my list uh, the men singers. The lyrics are really are very well written. Uh, she is also a big Bruce Springsteen fan. And the men singers definitely capture some of that style in their music. I already said the later stuff I feel like is very Bruce Springsteen inspired. Um, so she's a big fan of the men singers. I think she knew songs by the men singers before I even met her, but some of her favorite songs are your wild years. I don't want to be an asshole anymore in the obituaries. They're going in the a tier. So I know I, I was surprised. John is not a men singers fan at all. He does mm -mm. not like them. I really don't. Man. Even yeah, the I early stuff. I don't really like it. I, I, and they're so popular now. I, I just like, they, they've really they've gotten so huge. I know it's kind of surprising. Yeah, that's yeah. it's not for me. They're fine, but like, no, I don't like I, it. I, I mean, I can see you not liking them. To be honest, it's definitely not your style. And so, I really like it. I think the lyrics are are super good. And the two songs I gave her were "Your Wild Years" and "The Obituaries," which are two of her favorite songs. So, which obituaries? So good, so good. If you want to start with a Menzinger song, definitely that one. Lewis, have you ever listened to them? Yeah, I've I mean they've definitely come on shuffle and I've listened I think I gave one of the albums a listen through. Like it was it didn't really jump out to me, but maybe I'll give it another shot, I guess. I, I know a lot of people that really like them too, so Yeah. There must I be think there's, there's there, also a lot of people in the disc I think Spab is a big fan of them in the Discord as well. I think we talked about it. So but uh I guess uh your next band, John. So the next band I, I knew where this I predicted this one correctly too, because uh me, Kat, Lewis, and Kate just saw this band three three weeks ago, maybe two weeks, three weeks ago. Uh, Some 41. I gave her the Hell song, and I gave her We're All to Blame. And uh, she says, the Hell song, 
12 year old cat is very happy that I still know all the words way more aggressive than all killer. No filler still holds up. And uh, we're all to blame. She says prime angst. Do you hate corporate America? Global greed. Bam. Here's your war anthem. P.S. I know they're Canadian. <laughs> so uh, with that said, she put them in the S tier. Like what a, what a oh, weirdly good. awesome <laughs> review of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she likes them though she no, like they, there's never an I, issue not, when I'm these come on i'm not surprised by that i feel like they hit they hit uh, a similar style they get a little dark a little gritty yeah and stuff. and it's nostalgia you know like they, yeah they're nostalgia too the most she had eminem on hers yeah so. they're the most popular band outside of green day on my list how, yeah, the, how sick of a show do they put on though that was yeah incredible. it was really good what, was it awesome mm -hmm. yeah 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 okay hell yeah I couldn't afford to go. And I went to Italy instead, so that's fine. Which, which, so which much, is worth so it. So much production, though, was good. Yeah, I'm sure it was amazing, though. I, I wish I wish I could have went, but uh, all right. I guess uh, Louis, you're next. Yeah, here. Elliot's dying over yeah. there. We'll try to get through this. Up. Yeah, yeah we'll sorry. I'm we'll like I'm this. like sick, and I, I'm getting to my limit here. Okay, we'll, <laughs> that's we'll, cool. we'll get there. We're almost done. We're uh, Sublime yeah. is the next band for uh, Louis. All right, so Sublime, uh, one of my old favorites, probably the first, one of the bands that got me into. I think I've talked about it before, but one of the bands that introduced me to a lot of stuff, Dookie and this and uh, Forty Ounce, because I started looking up uh, uh, like the covers they did on Forty Ounce. I'm like, oh, what's this Descendants band that's mentioned? And they covered Bad Religion and stuff, so that's kind of introduced me to a lot of stuff. But yeah, Sublime's still a classic. She goes, well, duh, they're good. She goes, I'm. She goes, I don't really know about this whole with Rome thing, so I guess. <laughs> I haven't really told her that they're touring with his uh, son now, but uh, oh, yeah. so she does. I guess she doesn't like Rome. She goes, but all I know of Sublime is is the Santeria radio hits, etc. She goes, actually relax, etc. Makes me want to smoke weed, even though I don't smoke weed. She only <laughs> takes so much of them though. After about two songs, I'm over it. Uh, the two songs I gave her, I obviously gave her Santeria, even though I knew she would know it. Um, and then I did give her STP off of Robin the Hood because it's one of my favorites. Um, so, uh, yeah, but like, you know, obviously she th thinks they're good. So uh, they actually went into the A tier with Sublime. So I didn't think they were going to be the other D tier. So, yeah, the, the review was way, it could have gone either way based yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I would, I, I forgot you even put Sublime on there. So if I remember that, I would, I would have thought S tier, but yeah, that's cool. No effects beat out Sublime. It's so that's funny, a, right? Yeah, for real. All right, Elliot, we've got a, your next band. They've got a new record coming out in a couple of weeks, I think. The story so far. That is great. What did Katarina so, say about this? So I'll also uh, say the story so far probably could have been replaced by the Wonder Years, but I limited myself to one repeat band from her list to my favorite, and I also limited myself to one band that matched with your guys' list. Just for diversity's sake, so I picked No Effects and Flatliners, which are my two favorite there, so... The Wonder Years probably deserve this spot more, but I still love the story so far, and they have been in my top 10 band, and they're very close. But uh, what she said is uh, she thinks they're just okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. She never really got into them and prefers the Wonder Years way more, which I just said. Uh, she <laughs> likes some songs, but a, a lot just don't do anything for her. Uh, she also hasn't listened to too much by them, but her favorite songs are Quicksand and Things I Can't Change. Oh, yep. Uh, and she which are two bangers. I agree with that. And she put them in the C tier with the Misfits. Elliot, I texted you earlier, uh, and maybe you should tell her too, that new One Step Closer album is very reminiscent of Soil and Dirt era story so far. I would I would both of you check that out. It's really, really good. Es especially oh, okay. if those are her two favorite songs. Uh, yeah, give, yeah. give that album a spin. It's It's really good. Okay, um, yeah, let's check it out. One step closer. I think yeah. uh, I saw you posted it in the new music. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Join the Discord if you have it. Join the Discord. <laughs> like, subscribe. Click like, that comment, alert yes, bell subscribe. button. Definitely, definitely. It really, it, really, the alg it really helps our algorithm, gets our name out. Juice there. that algo. <laughs> All right. We want to be the next punk rock NBA. It's brought to you by uh, Manscapes, uh, the ball trimmer. No. <laughs> <laughs> one day, though. <that> <laughs> 
<laughs> pretty relevant yeah, to a discussion we were having earlier, but yeah. I, know. I swear to God, if that ever happens, you got to let me do the read. I will. That's the only thing I ever want to do on this channel is be able to do one of the ad reads. So he's like, I don't want to hang out with you guys or rank bands. I really just want to get to the point where I can read the Manscaped ad. <laughs> I want to read the Manscaped ad. Yeah, we we my, only we only goals. need probably 98,000 more subscribers and we will get there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, 50 years from now, we will be reading Manscaped ads. I, I guarantee it but uh I'll, I'll move us on uh the next band this is i predicted d tier because i have no idea how she feels about ska so i'm just my prediction was based on how most people who don't listen to ska feel about ska uh i got less than jake the songs i gave her i, tr I tried to go easy i gave her uh, look what happened and uh soundtrack of my life uh, so one okay. ska, one not so much ska, just in case you really hated it. Um, look what happened. This is surprising here. Horns should start immediately. I will not be elaborating further. So I, I don't know if that means she liked the horns or, or what, but that's all she said. And uh, Soundtrack of My Life like. says, meh, it does nothing for me, but it's not <laughs> offensively yeah. bad. I'm just yeah. bored by it. <laughs> A weird song to pick if i'm being honest i i, I didn't want to go too i like i honestly i don't know if we've ever discussed ska which just, is strange just go all my best <laughs> friends are metalhead i feel like that was the safest bet because less than jake is like their ska is like do you almost forget they're a ska band <laughs> yeah sometimes they're a pop punk band at heart they with, with yeah, horns yes um yeah that that may be on me but it, it didn't hurt them that she put them in the seats here like I said, I thought D better, better than Green Day. So. Yeah, and Pennywise. So uh, you should yeah. have obviously given her Mr. Chevy Celebrity to listen to. So <laughs> that would have really changed her mind. <laughs> I don't know why I picked Soundtrack of My Life. I, yeah, and Rock and Roll Pizzeria. I, yeah, that that was <laughs> yeah. a very very odd choice. And I, I mean, I I like it, but as like an introduction to Less Than Jake, it's a weird choice because it's very poppy. <laughs> All right. Um. Next band for Lewis is going to be Alkaline Trio. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alkaline. Yeah, so this one, I guess, uh, was a little bit of a weird one because we actually went to go see Alkaline together again. Yep. Uh, Kate and I with John and his wife. Uh, we saw them a few weeks ago. So she's somewhat familiar. So the songs that I gave her, I wanted to pick stuff that I knew she wasn't going to be super familiar with. So I gave her Dead End Road uh, off of Remains. It's off one of the EPs, which is what... Or it was a B-side or something. I forget off of like a like a cut rec a song, but I love that song. And I gave her radio just because I knew she saw it live, but I don't think she'd really heard it on record. So, uh, yeah, she said, I'm partial to these guys because this is kind of the first band that Lewis introduced me to and we both enjoyed. And then we went to see them and they were great. Once again, generally, the voice is a little whiny, but tolerable. She said their lyrics are a little cheesy and dumb, <laughs> uh, shaking like a dog shitting razor blades. She goes, for fuck's sake, but I still like the lyrics and them <laughs> overall stirring and feels like it would be cathartic to yell along to at a concert, which she saw me doing. So Alkaline, she's given the spot right next to Sublime there. So they got eight nice. years. I think it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I, I could have predicted. They have a lot of like crossover appeal for some the reason. Only, yeah. I yeah, think the so. only one that's surprising is No Effects. I think yes. I, I would I would I would have thought the Lawrence Arms would have been mm -hmm. higher up, but yeah, they, I would I would have swapped Lawrence Arms and No Effects, and then I would be like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this that's, like yeah, that's definitely. where I was thinking. But Lawrence Arms' voice is he's even his voice is pretty rough too though yeah it depends I mean, I, on the song though even though, I, even though yeah. I picked the one good the one song by the other guy i forget what his name is chris is uh chris yeah. right now so yeah uh but yeah i don't know who knows i mean no i mean to be fair though i picked two no effects bangers though so i mean it is it is what it mm. is so. all out of angst is a good pick yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. could touch no effects bangers there's I, that in my opinion like they, their best songs are the are the best songs so Maybe that's why. Amazing highs, amazing highs, and amazing lows. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like yeah. I I should have picked uh, some more safe choices, like seeing double or something like that. Because uh, yeah, I feel like it's a super accessible yeah. song, but it is All what right. it is. Ellie, your last two bands, I'd never heard either of them. <laughs> yeah, these um, are the, my deep cuts here. The first one is called Nothing Nowhere. Okay, so Nothing Nowhere. <laughs> is i this is gonna probably surprise some people so this is technically under the category of emo rap but 
I I don't like to even consider them that. I I think this guy is so talented that he's he's beyond that. Like I think he's better than all of his contemporaries in the genre to the point where I don't listen to any other emo rap except for this guy. I think he's very talented. And he also did this thing called One Takes during COVID where he redid all of his songs, where he played all the guitar. And he does all the guitar and the instrumentals and everything for uh, his music. And I really like it a lot. It was also uh, our second concert we ever went together was a Nothing Nowhere concert. But I got really sick from jumping in the the band before his mosh pit and we missed them because <laughs> I was like feeling really terrible after doing that. Uh, but uh, she said not really her thing, but she likes some songs, but wouldn't actively listen to them. That's about it. Favorite songs are fake friend and nightmare. And if you're going to try to get into them, those two songs are definitely the two songs you want to check out there. It's not like a uh, hip hop beats or anything like that. It's like actual drums and guitars and he's singing. It's, it's, it's like a, it's a it's a band. He's like a one man band. So uh, she put them in the D tier. Sorry. That's probably about based on the description. That's probably where I would put them too. Well, I mean, I have no doubt you would <laughs> not like them. I, I is so. Um, yeah. I, I didn't I, even know emo rap was a genre. So this is a very. You never very heard a little educational. Peep? Yeah, I have. Yeah, so I okay. guess that's it. Okay. Yeah, a little yeah. peep. Uh, XXX Tentacion's stuff. I mean, nothing nowhere is like emo rap as much as like you could say like you'd throw sublime and like ska genre. Like, I feel like they're just kind of oh, just so much so different and they just go beyond their, their contemporaries in the genre. A lot of times, like it was is this like, like calling the shit that's coming out on hopeless. Sorry. Is no, this like no. It's coming it, out on hopeless. May, okay. Maybe some, maybe some, no, I, I think it maybe some of it, but I think it's just better. I think it's better because he does okay. all the guitar and the drums and everything. Uh, it's not like beats with auto tune. Some of it is auto tune, but he also made one that sounded like a Linkin Park, like almost metal record, randomly out of nowhere. And I, I thought it was pretty good. I don't know if you guys like any Linkin Park at all, but oh, well, let's let's hope well, let's hope he doesn't end up the same way though. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So oh, oh my man. god, <laughs> disrespect! Damn, low blow out there. <laughs> First Tony Sly from Dylan, and now Chester Bennington from you. Let these men rest. All right? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, John, what's your right. last band here? All right, my last band I picked is uh, Pulley, not Pooley, as uh, Elliot says. Pooley. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I picked this song, uh, Stomach Aches for Matters, and I picked uh, Ocean Song. Yeah, and uh, she says, uh, this isn't their classic cover of Grim Grinning Ghosts, so what's the point? So they cover um, the song that plays in the Haunted Mansion, which... Yeah. Uh, my wife's a big Disney person and a big Halloween person, so that song, if I would have picked it, it probably would have propelled them higher. Uh, but she says, these bands are so sad about their lives. Can we crowdfund some ketamine therapy? That would be nice. That That is yeah. a very novel idea. Uh, half of them are probably on ketamine already, though. Uh, and then she says, for the Ocean Song, there's dogs on the album art. Preliminary thoughts are hopeful. About time there's some optimism, but two-thirds of the song is guitar. Bonus points for the dogs. I don't make the rules. A tier. So there we go. Pulley wow. going in the A tier. Mostly wow. what it sounds like for the album cover and in others. And a cover song, hey. but that's fine. Hey, man. <laughs> you, picked, uh, you picked good Pulley songs there. So you picked uh, better. We love Pulley. Less than Jake songs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ocean song is a great. Uh, oh, so good. Great. Oh. Oh, the intro rift is so good. I used to play it on guitar all the time. <laughs> so good. Uh, I love it. Yeah, she was into the pooly. Into the pooly. <laughs> pooly. <laughs> all right, Lewis, final band for you, Propagandy. Okay, that makes Propagandy. sense, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. It would be so, <laughs> Propagandy, uh, I gave her... You know, I probably should have went a little broader because obviously their first two albums sound way different than anything they did since. But I went with, um, uh, I went back to the Motor League because that feels like the propaganda song. Definitely. And I did name and address withheld because off of Potemkin because that's one of my favorites. And I was just like, yeah, this one kind of rocks. Uh, so her initial reaction was, this is the one that I have the hardest time formulating words to react to. Initially, I was like, this rules. And then I switched to, I hate this. And then back again. 
She goes, I landed more on the UG side. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're going to take the D tier. John, the song you were thinking of earlier, by the way, before I forget, was uh, uh, Rock for Sustainable Capitalism, yes. yeah. which maybe would have been a good pick for uh, for her to listen to. And I did tell her that I think we should uh, listen to maybe like a few off the first album or two and see what she thinks. But I did ask her, I said, I was really surprised by that one a little bit because I thought she would have liked the technicality of it because she likes, you know, music that's competent. It's the vocals, she was like, man. I, th I think the vocals are hit or miss for people. Yeah, that's what she said. And she said, but she goes, initially, I rolled down my windows and I was blasting it. And she's like, this feels pretty good. And then it really went through that phase of her. So, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go D tier propaganda, not getting any respect down there with the with the victim. So. I feel like maybe uh, Deer Coach's Corner would have been a good pick. I was curious. It's a good one, too. Yeah. I, wa I wonder. Uh, it's a little more melodic. I think his I don't know. Maybe, who knows? I mean, propaganda is probably going to end up in the D tier no matter what in comparison to everything else. I should have let her listen to Flensing of Indoor Cats. You know, that song where he talks about eating a man alive? That would have been an interesting no. one for her to react to. <laughs> I think Motor League is probably the safest bet, though. Honestly, for like a straight up rock banger. But yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, final song. Ellie, you're going to have to explain what this is for most people, too, I think. Uh, Prince, uh, Daddy, and the Hyena. Yes, One Prince, Hyena. Prince, Daddy, and the Hyena. Yeah. Yeah, just a single Hyena. Yeah. So Prince, Daddy, and the Hyena. Uh, they're like a band that uh, I think really got popular like 2015, 2016. And uh, me and my friends were just all about this band. Uh, we got really obsessed with them. We were really into them and uh, the, uh, that whole kind of weird genre, which you guys probably never dove into, which is like sorority noise, Remo Drive. <laughs> Uh, Never stuff heard like of that. It. <laughs> it's all like it's all like these kind of like mid Midwest emo punk influence type bands and stuff like that. Um, but Pr Prince Daddy, to me, they're an orgcore band at their core. Uh, I think the vocals very much sound like they could be like even like sometimes like Lawrence Arms sounding and stuff like that with like the crusty. raspy LA, very crusty vocals. Yeah. Um, but what she said about them was. Uh, she likes the weird vibes and the strange vocals. They have a fun, chaotic energy to them, but she only likes them at certain times. Not always feeling this. <laughs> so favorite songs are I Forgot to Take My Meds Today. Uh, Thrashville, two out of three. That's what it's called. Two thirds. And the song Really, which I think is their most popular song, which I think uh, if you want to try to get into their more punk stuff, Definitely, uh, I forgot to take my meds today. And uh, what's the other one? The impertinence of something. Jeez, I can't remember. A random exercise in impertinence. Those are two songs you'll want to check out. But they, they get they get pretty weird with it. They get they get kind of folky sometimes. They get kind of indie shoegazy. But then they'll also be like straightforward, like screaming raspy punk songs. I think they're a great band. Uh, they probably wouldn't have made my top ten if I added all the bands that I kind of. Uh, eliminated but i wanted to add them I, w I couldn't ever find another time to talk about them yeah and they're going in the c tier yeah so. that's that's surprising man those those two are i'm like what the heck top 10 <laughs> yeah probably not top 10 maybe like top 15 yeah that's good like we, we need some lot. diversity on here Lewis, that's what i'm saying if they all yeah, had the same bands i feel like it would have been kind of boring so. we, we just have like a warp tour flyer from like 98 through like 2003 both lewis and i <laughs> that's true yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> so I oh, mean, mine goes back to 96 i guess with sublime at least so <laughs> there you go so yeah mine i i decided to add nothing nowhere in prince da uh daddy just to keep it a little weird i just wanted to add some bands that i feel like i would never get a chance to talk about that i, I actually like a lot so yeah. uh, is nothing nowhere in prince daddy really top 10 uh, sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not. I feel like less than Jake and leftover crack probably would have taken it if I didn't choose no effects over those two for my top 10. But they vary for me too. I actually yeah. went and I watched a couple of those Prince daddy videos after you recommended them. Cause I'd never heard them really. And yeah, uh, yeah they're okay. I mean, I would, I, I don't know if it's necessarily for me. I liked one of the comments though. Like one of the top comments was, it was like from 2017. It was like, I cannot wait for these guys to blow up. Well, I guess he's still waiting, but here's <laughs> Elliot. Elliot talking about them seven years later as a top tenor. So that's yeah, good for and, them. And so on our 100 cool, yeah. subscriber, 100,000 subscriber YouTube channel, 
Uh, yeah. Now go ahead, read the Manscaped ad, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's uh, what's it called though? They're from Albany too, right, John? Yeah, so Albany in New York. Oh yeah. wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, they're they're locals, like Drug Church, which we also didn't know was like right in our backyard. So yeah, Drug Church is is in the same vein as like this this weird genre of kind of it's like oh. kind of punk, it's kind of indie, it's kind of Midwest emo. Uh, kind of, kind of alternative grunge. Post hardcore. Yeah, some of it. It's like, it's yeah. like all those, like little elements of all those combined. Uh, Fans that very, don't write choruses. Yeah, they, they. That they, is. They, they write choruses. <laughs> that is the best summation though of a lot of that style I've ever yeah, heard. That, That's it's great. pretty. It's pretty accurate though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So like, why would you want to enjoy this song? Let's just get it on with and make it five minutes long without any parts that you enjoy. Uh, <laughs> or or have it like go from one song into a completely different sounding song out of nowhere. And then it ends. Yeah. They love doing that too. All right. I was like, all right. <sighs> but yeah, we can we can finally uh we'll we'll uh put this chapter of punk rock radar to bed. Uh, the girls have gotten their revenge on us. They've gotten their jabs in. Uh, this is this is how it shook out. I mean, basically, I I wasn't within. I was within one tier on every single one of these, so nothing's too surprising. Um, Lewis, what would you say your biggest surprise with her with her list? Like, would you say it's the no effects being number one? Yeah, I, I think I might have thought Bad Religion would have snuck into B tier and no effects would have been B or C. Uh, so that it really I was really only off by one or two. So nothing really shocked me. But yeah, no effects for sure. Mm. I mean, is uh being an S tier is very shocking to me. I'm actually number one overall because I had her rank these one to ten instead. So that's even crazier. Really? So oh. yeah. Huh. Yep. Good and good for them. Elliot, any major surprises on your end? Uh, I think Rancid in the S tier was pretty yeah. surprising. I thought they were going to be A or B tier. I thought the Menzingers were solidly going to be an S tier because we were singing those songs I put on the list just like, uh, like together, like not too long ago. We were singing Your Wild Years and the Obituaries. So uh, I thought they were going to firmly make S, but uh, it's like one off. Everything else makes sense. I actually thought Misfits would be in D. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a, a surprise as well. All right, well, we'll uh, wrap it up here so Elliot can uh, lay down and get his electrolytes, uh, yeah, feel man. better. Gator lights. I, I can see you fading over there, so we'll wrap this up quick. Uh, as always, guys, I'm thank sweaty. you so much for watching. Uh, make sure and tune in on Wednesdays for all of June. We're going to be ranking, uh, or actually, we got a ska album bracket. Uh, if you want to participate, make sure you show up on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, and join the Discord. We'll have some discussion before and after that. Uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, there's a link down below to the uh, limited run store. There is a 50% off the new t-shirt code that's going to be shipping mid to late June. So if you want a 50% off shirt, uh, hit the links down below. And yeah, that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Peace out. Later, guys.